Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? We out here in the middle of the struggle. This is Kensington. This is where addiction takes you. And we got some real ones who's gonna, who's gonna open your eyes to what led them down this road. I'm out here with a very nice young lady. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing fine. What's your name? Valerie. Oh, Valerie. She got my mother name. Yo, shout out to the Valeries. How old are you, Valerie? Um, 37. Okay, Valerie is very young. Where are you from originally? Chester County, Coatesville. Yo, shout out Chester, we out there. <laughs> let's go down memory. Okay, let's talk about Chester a little bit. Let's talk about the good and the bad. Okay. So, uh, Coatesville, I was born and raised there. It was always like pretty like uh, violent. They call it Little Philly for real. But like, I know my babysitter was murdered on my street uh, when I was a young John. So my mom moved us like, uh, I don't know, downtown or whatever. But Coatesville is known for violence and drugs and poverty. Um, fucking, but the good, there's a lot of history there. I mean, I grew up there and it's really beautiful in some places. Like, I mean, it's really just a beautiful place. Any place can be good or bad. It's just like, I mean, what it is, so. Okay, that's what's up. I know one thing though, I don't never want to go back there and I'm not, so. Heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Two to the front, two to the back. <laughs> Coatesville. All right. Let's go in middle school and high school. What type of student were you? All right. So I was a good student, but I had a lot of home problems. So, like, um, I got kicked out in the seventh grade, but I did get my GED when I was pregnant with my daughter. Um, but I love school, though. It's just like I said, I had, like, my parents be, my mom was an alcoholic. My dad shot dope. And it was just very crazy at all times, as you can imagine, with alcohol. So, like I just would go in there tired or go in there, I'd have outbursts and so I wish I would have had better, like I wish it would have been better so I could do better in school because you can't come back. But I was a good student as far as very smart. I'm fortunate to be smart. Like but math is not my subject. Like I'm just reading and spelling and uh, comprehension and all that. But I do wish I could go back. I remember the teacher said, um, you I kept getting in trouble and all that and she's like, You'll regret this like and then when I walked my daughter through there to get her locker, I was like, damn, like I wish I could have I heard her say that to me. I wish I could have, like, you know, went and finished it, graduated and all that. I never went to prom or nothing, so. So you graduated high school? No, I got kicked out of school. Oh, you got, got kicked, kicked out? out in the seventh grade, yeah. In the seventh grade. Yeah. So what do you do after you, you got, you dropped out of school? Um, I was locked up for, uh, like I said, I mean, I was troubled child and, you know, family don't give a fuck. So I was just always ripping and running, getting arrested. And I was locked up from 16 to, like, uh, 16 to 17, right around my birthday, mm. right around my 18th birthday. Are your parents still alive? My mom died from alcohol uh, five years ago. I'm to the and my dad, he's alive and sober. But he don't really uh, for me. I'm sorry you had such a tough upbringing in life. You're a very strong person. I'm glad you're alive. Mm, thank you. You know, keep your head up. Let's move forward currently. Okay, let's talk about favorite childhood memories. Do you have any? Um... I mean, even though my family was like dysfunctional and crazy, like they were my family though. So that was like my norm. But like, I know they did always take us, uh, like always took us to the beach or whatever. I remember, I just remember the beach. Like we get on the water rides and the regular rides and go eat somewhere. And it always be crazy and filled with fighting and drunk shit. And, but it still it was like, I miss it sometimes. But yeah, just the beach is a child I remember from me. Well, that's awesome. You got some memories to, you know, you can refer reflect on. Let's move forward currently out here in Kensington to truck pass. Okay, so let's talk about addiction. We out here currently in a very drug infested area. What led you down this road? Mm. So my dad shot dope from 14 to 37 and he literally would bring us here every morning. Um, my mom drank alcohol, so I remember every morning he would bring us here and I would try to wake her up and she would just be too drunk, like, try to wake her up so I didn't come here because he'd always fall out behind the wheel, get in an accident, just a bunch of crazy shit. So, um, I know when you're, I went to school and learned, like, you know, if you're around domestic violence, you'll become the abuser or the abused. So, like, I basically had, um, what they say, you're 10 times more likely to use if your parents use, you're 10 times more likely to not graduate school, you're 10 times more likely to, you know, da da da, and all that. So, um, but me personally, I, I hated my mom from the alcohol, I hated my dad's, uh, like what happened with his dope and everything. So, I really was one of them, like, it'll never be me. But, um, my son's, uh, or my daughter's father got a girl pregnant on me, and 
it just it like ruined me and depressed me and fucking um that's when I started using he had gave me Xanax to like calm me down and like I was I never had no family or nothing so he was it and we were supposed to have a family and then he sabotaged that so that's how I came back wow I'm so sorry you got a heart yeah you got your heart broken I'm sure a lot of us can relate to having our heart broken by somebody who we love. That can make us do things we would normally never do. Right. You know, so that's no joke. So where is he now? Is, is he you know, your child father? Yeah, he's not. Unfortunately, he like was like, uh, you know, like very dysfunctional. He loved me more than he was more worried about me than my daughter. But she has my dad. He's there for her. That's like her father. He's not in her life. Um, and I don't deal with him. So I care gotcha. less about him. He was very abusive, very toxic, and he's like, if I had any respect or love for him, it would be because of what he does for Gianna, and he's not there for her, so I can give a fuck about him. Okay, so let's talk about we out here currently in the struggle. What drugs are you battling? Um, I do, I always say dope, but it's not like heroin. It's like the animal strength. Uh, it's a xylazine, and um, fentanyl is my favorite with powder, and then I like hard too, so. So you have three habits, right? Them yeah. things is no joke. I know. What do you do for work? Um, I'm not working right now. I'm on the fucking run, so I can't. Uh, I can't work like a real job. I'm scared of coming there and get me, and then fucking, um, you know, because I want to work my warrants out and shit. And then I don't do, you know, dates like people do dates a lot. I'm not. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't boost. So basically, I just sell like my little subs or my food stamps. <laughs> my, I live off of samples, like, you know, my friends help me out. It, may, it fucks with my insecurities, though, because I sold forever. I used to make so much money. Like, I would take these bags back home and make $20 a pop of them, and now I'm out here, like, broke. Like, I feel like a bum. So it really fucks with my insecurities. But, um, yeah, as far as working, I'm not working. How much do you spend on your habit, average, on those three habits every day? Um, well, I at least get one a day, so I know that's, like, 15, but... If I have money, I'll spend, like, I could spend up to 200 a day, but, I mean, like, minimum $50, probably. Everything's $5 here, so, or sometimes it's trays. But luckily for me, though, people do look out, and then they got samples, like, crazy around here. And then just me being, you know, we say, like, you're an attractive girl or whatever. Like, me and my beautiful friend KK walked up, and they're like, give her a sample, give her a sample. So it kind of works out, but, right, right. yeah. What does a typical day out here look like for you? Um, just trying to get to the another just trying to get to another bag i'm in like a really dark place right now going through a lot of shit so i don't even want to be awake i'd rather just be you know like zombie don't feel nothing but so i'm trying to get to that point but it's just i don't know just it's hard it's what, all, go ahead, no, go ahead. what all what all struggles are you having um i'm dealing with like so i don't know i stay to myself i don't bother with nobody and um girl a lot of the girls are just, just jealous like stupid catty female shit like going out of their way to fuck with me i don't follow the leader so you know they don't like that and then they just i don't know they're i'm cool with their boyfriends or cool with uh you know just guys in general i don't know they just don't like me because they're just haters but um like i said kk is like the only friend i got out here that i care about other than that i don't care about these fucking bitches but they go out of their way to fuck with me like stealing my clothes um all types of shit just like we're here right now they'll see me and then i'll walk right past them and they'll just be like say something just to start a fight and just stir something up like if you don't like somebody like just let them be but i like literally like they gotta go out of the way of them. so but that shit's a lot to deal with it's annoying like it's, I, it's stupid petty stupid shit like i could care less about them but like, i'm not the main focus now guys i tell them that like i don't need dates and all that and they'll be like no, they always be like, oh, I don't either, whatever the case is, but they'll say, well, come with me and chill, and I'm like, listen, like, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna change, man, they get mad as shit, they think if they give me, like, a heart, or that I'm gonna, like, literally, like, suck their dick or something, like, like, not to be, like, crude, but yeah, then when it don't go down like that, oh, get out, you're a whore, you're this, and I'm like, yeah, that's because you're mad, because I'm not sucking your dick, and then they're <laughs> whole hitting me you're in my face. You're disrespectful, right? <laughs> the whole ghetto, hit me in my face, everything. Oh. I got more problems with guys out here than I do females. That's crazy. So how do you stay safe out here? Um, I don't know. I'm real street smart. And, like, I don't know. I can take a lot, I guess. Like, I guess I just let them, a guy just hit me, and then I just go. There's a good Samaritan law about with dope that 
to save a life. Like if someone's overdosing, we just call, we won't ask no questions. People used to let people die because when the cops came, they would be like, you know, they find the drugs or whatever. Well, the Good Samaritan law is we won't ask any questions as long as you save a life. So like for us women with warrants, like we should have one of those for like men that violate us, you know, like sexually and shit. Because I have a guy out here that, you know, like violating me in a major way and I'm always crossing them, so that scares me. Mm -hmm. But like, I can't go to the cops and say anything because they're gonna, they might do something to him, but they're gonna lock me up. So they should care about that and try to make a law like that, but I doubt it. But, yeah. yeah, I wanted to ask you, since you said that out here is very dangerous, what has been your worst experience that you have seen, that you have heard about, or that has happened to you? Um, I went on the, uh, I mean, I'm always just last night I was a street away from a gunshot so I'm always like right you know what I mean and then like I can't even see right now either so I don't even know where it's coming from but I say the thing that uh like traumatized me the most out here is when I went on the um I went up to the train tracks and I seen uh eight guys up there they had their throats cut and they was laying one by one and it was just like just thinking about what they did what they went through and I mean like even if they say there was girls hanging in the warehouse you know and then there's people around here literally like uh, harvesting people's like organs and like people don't know there's a lot especially for the girls with dates and sad there's so many of them missing and like the weirdos like coming out here just to take the girl and you know do the date but then rape them and then beat them up uh, then you know cut their throats leave them hanging yeah leave them stranded like but yeah, can we put the camera on her for one second? Yeah. This is my best I love her. That's my best friend. I just want to show her real quick. That's my girl. Yeah, right? she got next, yeah. right? You yeah, got, got next, next, right? But that's my girl, though. That's the only one that uh, that I, my, I love her. Like, I've, I've known her from day one out here. And it's the only one I care about. Yeah. And then okay. just remember this interview. Uh, I don't even know the date. That's what's a shame. I think it's the 27th. But yeah, I'm not going to be this addict, you know, getting high, broke, bum, bitch five pounds forever it's not gonna happen i'm definitely i freestyle i'm nice as shit and i'm taking my girl with me and we're okay. gonna be all right we're gonna get our kids back they're gonna smile again so all right heard that that's what i'm gonna say with that well we wish you all the best you know thank so you so let, let's get off topic all right what's your favorite color uh green is my favorite color wow i'm digging blue lately but i really yeah i fuck with green heavy okay i love green what are some of your favorite foods um, I love my stuffed shells with sauteed chicken and spinach. Um, I love steak and crab legs. And then uh, I love them in Panadillas and you just got me. <laughs> and shout out to him too. I just met him today. He's like, focus. I hope your dreams come true too. But sweetheart, uh, buying me lunch and everything. So. Oh, yo. We're we, we in this together, you know? <laughs> Do you have a favorite band or artist you listen to? Uh, Meek Mill. I love okay. Meek Mill. So, my favorite rapper. And then he dropped it too, and that's how it is with me. I have dreams and visions and stuff, so, but I love me, you know, Okay. All right, that's what's up. Christmas or Halloween, which one are you? Halloween. Why? Um, uh, we never really did the family thing, so it's kind of like aggressive like Halloween, because it's not about all that, and I just love the costumes and everything. Okay. When you was a little girl, what do you want to become when you grow up? Um, I wanted to be a doctor, but then, uh, I remember I wrote a thing that said, when I grow up, I want to be a vampire and bite all the people that I love so they can live forever with me. So I remember I wrote that. that was funny. Okay, do you have a uh, a skill or a talent that we need to know about? Uh, yeah, rapping and dancing. I okay. Hey. I literally like freestyle and fucking on go. Whenever you tell me to, I go and wow. I don't know what it is. I, I actually am talking about something too and I'm fast and I've been like, I got best poet award in third grade. I've always wrote poems and stuff like that. But when my best friend died, that's when I really took it seriously. And I'm good and that's what's going on. This drug shit's almost over and then I'm going to be known for that. Not just being an addict. What's your Zodiac sign? Gemini. Yo, shout out to the Gemini. Show your son some love. Yes. What, what are some things you love most about yourself? Um, I love that I'm a leader. I love that I can uh, take accountability. I get to get what I'm wrong. Fold, no matter what. If you could fly or be invisible, which one would you pick? Um, I'll be invisible. Why? Because I just want to move comfortably. <laughs> I just want to move comfortably and not have, I just want to, you know, just, right. I want to be peaceful. What's your short term goals now? Um, to get into this uh, Mommy and Me program or some type of uh, program, like as far as like methadone or something, and get, uh, like, not sober, but you know, walk with a crush. To me, it's, it's, it's sober, and it's good, and I want to just focus on that, and getting my son and my 
the auto bag and then my house and, and then the rap shit. Awesome. So what keeps you going every day? Um, some days, honestly, some days I don't even think I can do it. I feel so suicidal. It's not even funny. But other days I just, I don't know, it's just something. But I keep praying and I don't know. And that's why I got love for too. Every time I feel like at my worst, KK comes around. And like she always can just make me like, pay attention to what I'm missing. I might be negative and just falling short. And she like, you should be like this. And the cup is not uh, half empty, it's half full. So, that, and even right now, because I don't really care about myself, I don't know how to, and I love my kids, but they also, it's like hard, because I don't want them to see me struggle. So right now, I need her to be my friend There are a lot of people in this world who judge people who are struggling with addiction. What's your message for the world? Um, for people that are struggling with addiction, I guess, like, I don't know, the addiction doesn't discriminate, and I definitely was one of those, like, it'll never be me, so... You know, when you point one finger, there's always three pointing back at you. But just take your time and just don't be so hard on yourself because, you know, you might not get the chance to wake up and try to fix it. But you are not the drugs you do. For anybody that's an addict, you're not the drugs you do. Like, I'm the person that's not going to steal from you. I have a good heart. Like, that's who I am. I'm not crack. I'm not dope. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm my, who I am. My integrity as a woman and a mom and a friend. That's who I am. So you, you weren't always getting high. You picked them up. You can put them down. So... Yeah, that's my message. Awesome. So, AML family, I want to tell Valerie, thank you so much for being courageous. Thank and we're, you. me and her, going to do some more projects, you know, upcoming projects soon. So, I hope so. be on the lookout for that. So, is there anything that you're in need of that we can help you with? Um, no, you've helped me a lot today. I appreciate it. But I just want to say, um, for for all the shit I've been through out here, it's so crazy. Like how these how people like really hate. But if you hated me while I was at my lowest, like you won't want to kill yourself when I get to my highest. Okay. Shoot to the front, shoot to the back. All right, guys. So remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out. All right, you did your thing.